hope is essential for society's growth. It's easy for us to lose hope now, seeing the wealth gap widening every day. Looking around, all the shopping malls are filled with similar shops. Our economy is dominated by a few big players. The disparity is actually getting worse during COVID because we rely more on online interaction. People don't really walk on the street and accidentally discover new businesses anymore. Big companies that have big marketing budgets can basically dictate what we see online. Local small businesses are struggling to survive. Like many of you, I once went through this emotional roller coaster of building a startup, had a great time, winning multiple awards, and I thought that I was gonna make it. But in the end, I had no choice but to give in to the big corporations' monopolies. It was a rude awakening to the reality of the game that small players don't really stand a chance to win. I lost hope, not because I lost the battle, but because I struggled to find a fair ground for fighting. But this is not just happening to me, but to everyone trying to build something for themselves. The internet used to give us hope, but now we need something to help restore equality. Web3 can be the answer to it. Let me try to explain. So what is Web3? It's all about ownership. Don't be confused by the jargons like NFTs, metaverse. Web3 is nothing mysterious, and it doesn't exist somewhere else. It's just another format of internet interaction. To understand more about why Web3 emerged, let's start with Web1. Web1 was the beginning of websites, which means it enables the free distribution of knowledge. But it's a read-only format, and you don't really have any interaction with the viewers, there are no metrics to trace, and no numbers to quantify things with. So it evolved into Web2. Social media platforms emerged. User-generated content became the center. All the likes, comments, mode our social interaction in a new way. People can see their field counts, streaming numbers, number of likes, so everyone is spending time and money chasing those numbers. People can interact with each other instantly despite any physical boundaries. And it created tremendous business opportunities. But wait a minute, are you aware that each one of you is providing free labor to these content-driven tech giants. And you don't even complain about working overtime. What's more, you don't actually own anything you create. They own it all. It would be really funny if they put up a job ad like this. Come to work for us for free and own nothing you create. All the photos, videos, even the shops and the followers you create on the social platform can disappear overnight if they decided to stop data storage or suspend your account. All your content would be gone. Yes, we make them the most powerful companies in the world, but they can delete us just like that. So, Web3 emerged, ownership and decentralization. No single entity holds all the valuable information anymore. Data is no longer stored on the tech giant server room, but on the blockchain. So everyone can assess that fairly, it's transparent, and no one can change the record. I see the huge potential that can be unlocked by Web3. So I've jumped right in, and I'm now leading strategic partnership in one of the top Web3 ecosystem builders in the world. I want to help people who are struggling to find ways to build their businesses like I was with my startup. Web3 can redistribute powers of big corporations by enabling the ownership of digital content, which is essentially our digital assets. It levels the playing field and allows the creation of network effects and to tap into a new world of opportunities. You may think you're happy with the services you're getting from the tech companies, and you don't care about being a free laborer. How is it related to you? The major issue here is that 
we didn't care about asset ownership in the digital world as much as we do in the physical world. Let's look at asset ownership in the physical world. Say you purchased a house. You can freely decorate it the way you want. You can ask for no permission and paint your wall. And you can resell it at a fair market price. And you can even rent it out when you are not using it. The ownership of your house actually enables the emergence of businesses like interior designer firms, renovation companies, IKEA, and even Airbnb. That's called the network effect. Without asset ownership, those innovations and emergence of businesses wouldn't be possible. However, in the Web2 world where you don't own your digital assets, you can't change anything inside your house yourself. For example, one day you come home and then you found that all your walls have turned red for no reason. Or you come home one day and being stopped by a sign saying, due to policy changes, you have to share your home with a stranger. If you don't accept, you can't even go into your own home. How ridiculous is that? But this is exactly what's happening on the internet when you don't own your digital assets. Digital assets, we call them NFT in Web3. They are stored on the blockchain. They can be in the forms of photos, videos, skins and props inside a game, or even just words. Some of you may have seen the news of NFTs being sold for a couple of millions, and you thought that, ha, it's just some silly game. I can just right click and save a photo. No, it's about ownership and network effects. It's about openness, co-creation, and community building. For example, Board Ape Yacht Club is a collection of 10,000 unique looking apes. Each one of them represents the commercial rights associated with that unique ape, which means you can do whatever you want to monetize that. We're seeing some ape owners using their ape to open burger shops, making fashion merchandise, or launching a music band with their apes. Even if you don't own one of them, you can create businesses to target the ape owners, just like IKEA offering furniture to the homeowners. The limit is your imagination. It's like a new form of IP building, if you think about that. Early this year, the company that created Board Ape Yacht Club was worth four billion US dollars, which normally takes company years to achieve that, but it took them less than one year. The reason is they had 10,000 people building it together. That's the network effect. And that's where we see creativity from a community. The other application is gaming. Personally, I didn't really like playing games because I felt like it's a little bit of a waste of time. And it seems unfair to me that gamers are the ones who make the game famous by investing hours into playing the games, even promoting the games to their friends, but getting nothing tangible in return. But in web free games, you can actually own the assets inside the game, like your avatar, skins, and props. It's a form of NFT. And then you can be rewarded with gaming token when playing the game. This has created a model called play to earn. For gamers, the token will give you voting rights. So you can have a say in the direction of the company, or you can sell it. It's like owning a share, but then you get it by playing the game, investing your time. Also, other game developers can develop new games on top of existing games and NFTs without asking for permission. And this is how the transparency and the asset ownership allows creativity. It's not about playing game to earn money. It's about changing the role from a consumer to an investor. Also, in Web3, you can be investing or supporting musicians you'd like and share their future success, whereas only music label could do this in the past. It can also be applied to fashion, sports, education, teachers, or content creators too. Web3 makes a new range of business models possible. You may be nobody in Web2, 
You can't be somebody in Web3. Web3 is only at its initial stage of developing a new form of economy. But as the network effects takes place, it will become more prevalent. As with all new development, there are bound to be ups and downs. But just as the dot-com bubble didn't kill the internet, having back ownership and removing centralization is an inevitable change. You may be wondering, how can I get started? There are three things you can do to start getting into Web3. Firstly, a wallet. Now you can have ownership of the digital assets. You need a digital wallet to contain them. Opening a wallet is easier than you think. Most of them are free to open. There are mainly three types, namely cold wallet, hot wallet, and custodial wallet. Personally, I prefer the first one. Learn about the differences and find the one that is suitable for yourself. Secondly, evaluate and do your own research. Don't be confused by the titles of NFTs, metaverse. Check if the project actually gives you ownership and know what you're investing in. There are so many new applications of Web3 every day. I suggest you to follow some news. It can be really inspiring. Thirdly, bring it back to your industry. Think about how Web3 can reshape your industry. And we need more innovators like you to drive the change. Today, I just wanted to share a few examples and crack the door open. It's up to all of us to build the future together. Web3 is relevant to everyone. Having the ownership of digital assets and creating network effects can definitely bring a fair playing field for people to build their businesses, to eliminate monopoly, and everyone will have a chance to be investing in the future, creating hope. Thank you.